Welcome to the Reputation Revolution show. My name is Trevor. It's great to have your company. Hey, we hear it all the time. Stories of superstar content creators who are knocking it out of the park. They're building huge audiences in the hundreds of thousands, if not millions, on platforms such as YouTube, TikTok, and Instagram. Now, don't get me wrong. I love hearing those stories, particularly when the people in question are credible individuals who are building their brand in a genuine, organic way, not just trying to game the system to collect followers for their ego. We should applaud and follow these people. We should learn from them. They're the best. These content creators who are out there in the trenches doing it day in and day out and getting great results. But I'm just as interested in seeing credible entrepreneurs and professionals who run their own business get strategically active in this space and start getting more purposeful about putting themselves out there. And by that, I mean creating content, writing articles, recording videos, producing podcasts, crafting posts for LinkedIn, sparking conversation on social media, uh, and often generating media exposure as well for their personal brand. I'm talking about getting on radio, maybe some TV, being a guest on other people's podcasts, writing articles for online publications. I love seeing those sorts of people start getting results. And it happens. I do see it. I do see it all the time. But I know it takes planning and it does take effort. And that's what today's episode is all about. How can a busy professional expert and advisor, a business owner with a story to tell and ideas to share, how can they start effectively building their personal brand in a way that's strategic, sustainable and respectful? Not chest beating. I'm not talking about that but I'm talking about adding value and having a go. My guest today is Alex Martin. Alex is a lawyer. He's a litigation specialist from Melbourne who has done exactly that. Within a 12-month time frame, he's gone from posting the odd random LinkedIn post to being a consistent publisher on that platform. Plus, he's got a regular podcast he produces. He does videos, writes articles for business magazines, and is a regular expert interview guest on radio and television. This is an all-encompassing conversation with Alex. It's not just about doing the one thing and then knocking it out of the park, and isn't that great? It's about knitting together many of the key elements that come into play when strategically building one's professional profile and reputation in the marketplace. Alex has done that and more. This is his story. Welcome to the show, Alex. Can we kick off by giving people a bit of a thumbnail sketch of who you are and a bit about your business? I want to give listeners some context before we get into your story proper. So while you're thinking about that, in full disclosure, um, we know each other. We've been working together uh, to help build your your visibility and personal brand in the marketplace uh, this past year. And so, uh, you know, by me knowing your story and watching your progress, I'm really wrapped to see what you've been able to achieve in a PR and personal branding sense. Um, So let's get into it. Um, Your thumbnail sketch, a little bit about you and the business and uh, what you're doing day to day. Thanks, Trevor. Thanks for having me on the show. I'm excited to talk to you, actually. Um, I'm a a lawyer. Um, We specialise in in doing work for business owners. So all of our clients are business owners. Uh, In particular, we're kind of looking at the market where of a turnover of about five mil to about 50 mil. So we're not very small business lawyers and we're not very large business lawyers. We're sort of in that middle range. Yep. Um, I've been running Taurus Legal now for eight years. Yep. So um, 2015 is when I started. And uh, and back then it was just me and a telephone and a computer. And, and we've come a long way since then. There's five of us now. It's and, all good um, business to start. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. Uh, so we've come a long way. But really, uh, in the last year since I've been working with you and, and others to try and get um, the, uh, to raise our profile, uh, really in the last 12 months, uh, uh, the, the, the business has changed quite a lot. Yep. So, um, and in terms of your, you're a commercial um you, you, the law firm is more of a commercial law firm, and you particularly are a a litigations uh, specialist, a strategist. Yes, yes, that's right. So, so the firm does commercial law only. So we don't do family law, we don't do personal injury law, we don't do wills and estates. You know, we just work for business owners. Uh, yep. So that contracts and, and advice as well as disputes, and we do a lot of disputes. My personal background is disputes, so I'm a dispute resolution 
lawyer, a litigation lawyer and a litigation strategist. So the big thing we, the, the big difference in our firm is that, that we really give you a, a strategy as to how to um, resolve your matter uh, as best you can, whether that's in alternative dispute resolution or, or at court or or through some other mechanism. You look at the, the, all of the issues in front of a, a client and say, well, how are we get, what's the best strategy to resolve this dispute as best we can? And and very uh, very much on the business side, you deal with uh, you know large family businesses mainly family uh, yeah. you know, fast growth sort of medium medium sized businesses. That yeah, are quite yeah. Big, right? the banks call them you know SMB small to medium SMEs small to medium enterprises. I wouldn't call them that. Uh, usually uh, they're family businesses, so often they're run by a family or two families, you know, and it might be mum and dad and the kids, or it might be, um, you know, two business partners who've been friends for years and their families, yeah. um, or it might be a, a smaller business than that that's run by one person or one family, but they're um, fast growth, yeah, they're, they're, they're really going places. Um, yeah. we don't, you know, we don't sort of work for um, a, a very small business. It might be, a, you know, one person operating from home type thing. Yeah. Um, we tend to find that people who get the most value out of our services are people who've got, you know, staff. They might have, you know, 50, 100, 200 staff. They might have, you know, uh, they have in partnership with someone, so they need to, you know, they've got partnership issues and, and succession issues, all the sorts of things that we do. They're the, they're yeah. the kind of clients that suit us. And and you're very focused on um, you've got a lot of blue-collar type businesses, if we can call them that, and uh, starting to do a lot more in professional services. And as you say, um, and again, this is for context because this is the sort of content that we're talking about right. is that, you know, you've got um, people that are uh, in disputes with, with are they in disputes with customers, with partners, with, them, with themselves, with their employees. You know, when you dig right. down there's you know, if you're running a, a professional services firm, an employee walks out the door with uh, your clients, um, you know, that that that's when you come into into, into play. Yeah, that's right. So you're either having a dispute, that probably the most common dispute, believe it or not, is a dispute between owners. So that's two <laughs> business partners who've gone into business together and are having a dispute with each other, which which people often think that's not going to happen. But it's actually, it's like a marriage breakdown. It's, it's actually very common. Yeah. Uh, so that's a common one. And then disputes with customers, disputes with employees, um, uh, and then and, and poaching, which you, you just, just, just hinted yeah. at. seems to be a huge issue at the moment, particularly because of the tight labour market. People are poaching each other's staff, poaching yeah. each other's customers or both together. And there's lot, like a lot of quite complex law around that. And we kind of yeah. specialise in resolving those sort of disputes. And reputation issues and yeah. people suing others and all of that. That's your your wheelhouse. And and it's probably worth noting here too that um, this is not a seasonal thing. You know, you don't you can't plan for a lot of these disputes right. because they can pop up at any time and you're needed at, you know, the drop of a hat when things get quite nasty. I mean, right. obviously, as you say, you've got that other side of the business that does all the, the contracts and the commercial law and, you yeah. know, helping people de-risk their business in that regard. So that's your day to day, but more your role as a, as a, um, as a litigation um, strategist, it, it, there's no rhyme or reason when any of this stuff comes in, which means you have to have a profile and be top of mind all the time. Right. Yeah, that's the big challenge. When a litigation happens, it's not something you plan for. You know, companies don't seek out litigation. It happens when it happens. And when it does, usually you need urgent assistance. So so we kind of need to be in everyone's face or at least yeah. everyone at the top of everyone's mind so that when it does happen, they, they come to us. That's the big challenge and probably the unusual challenge for a litigation law firm that you want to you want to be front of mind. So when the litigation happens, when the customer doesn't pay or when the staff member runs off with the, the, the um, customer list or, you know, or when you're, you're um, your business partner decides to leave out of the blue or takes money out of the account or something, all of those things happen suddenly and need urgent assistance. And you don't have time often to, you know, get 10 law firms to quote on it and have a think about it and go back and, you know, you need action straight away. And so we need to be there when, when, when the, uh, when the S H I T hits the fan, so to speak. And, and a lot of your business is referred from, you know, accounting firms and probably management advisors and uh, mentors and, uh, and other and other law firms as well who haven't got your speci uh, specialty skills in house. 
Yeah, that's exactly right. So a lot of our, obviously we've got a lot of ongoing clients and we might do their contracts and then when they have a dispute, we, we help them with that. But a lot of the dispute work on its own comes out of, from referrers, particularly accountants. We get a lot from accountants. because People go to their accountants and say, what do I do? And the accountant yeah. says, well, I'm not the right person for this, but I've had, you know, one of my other clients has been looked after by Taurus, so so they refer us on. So accounts, yeah. other law firms, you're right, um, don't do disputes. They might do commercial law or they might do wills or they might do family yeah. law or whatever that they, you know, they get the call and they'll, they'll refer it on to us. So we really need to appeal to other professional advisors as one of our kind of audiences because that, that's where a lot of our work comes from. And yep. then obviously to the clients directly for, for, for so that we're front of mind when, when, the, when, when they need us. Yeah. So the, the, um, thanks for that, Alex, because that, that sort of sets the scene because, um, you know, you do need to be known. Um, you need to, you know, have that presence in the marketplace and be recognised, not just brand recognition, but recognised for who you are and what your skills are and, and you know, so people can get to know you because I'm, I'm tipping that to have a lawyer in your court, uh, in your corner, so to speak, um, it, it's as much about trust more than anything. More than anything, absolutely hit the nail on the head. And, and that's the big, if you want to hire a lawyer, you need to trust them. And almost everyone who, who has a lawyer, they either don't like them or if they do like them, it's because they trust them because they see them as a really close um, close friend or close confidant. Um, yep. and, and so to build that trust is the really difficult thing. Obviously, you can over a 20-year relationship that's personal. Of course. Problem, but if you're trying to build that that on scale, that's the really difficult part. And so we yeah. find, if we're, you know, if, my, if, if you've seen my face three or four times before you've spoken to me or spoken to me and then since seen my face or since, you know, yep. had these kind of touch points with us, then you're more likely to, to, to build that trust um, uh, that you absolutely need. Nobody hires a professional advisor unless they trust them. And, and the big challenge for us is how do you build trust? Trust with your kind of audience, uh, other than going and seeing them personally and sitting in their of office, which obviously is a key part of what we do. But there's only so much of that you can do. You've only got so many hours in the day. Uh, and so you can't just go and, and meet all of these people, sit in their office and talk to them about what's important to them. And, and so yeah. the sort of work that I've done with you and, and, uh, and generally is to try and build trust, uh, build a trusted brand, you know. Yeah, indeed. Scaling Scaling trust. <laughs> Scaling <laughs> trust. Yeah, that's, that's probably, that, that's, that's a good Very hard to do. So firstly, before you started on this journey of becoming known, and I'll stress yeah. that this is not sort of, we're not talking a one hit set and forget hack here. We're talking about a strategic and sustained level of activity. But what were you doing? So take a, go, you know, go back a year. What were you doing from a sure. personal brand marketing point of view? Were you active at all or just sure. putting, I seem to recall you were just putting up the occasional LinkedIn post? Yeah, that's right. So before before we sort of embarked on this journey, we were we were yeah doing the occasional LinkedIn post. We were putting stuff on our website. We were writing articles. Um, I think we for a period we had a Facebook and an Instagram, although um, uh, we might have dropped off and, and stopped using those um, uh, because we didn't sort of feel they were particularly helpful. So we did yeah. a little bit of online stuff. Um, we were going to industry events. We were really I was doing what what most lawyers do, which is I was pressing the flesh. I was going out and shaking hands. I was uh, going and visiting clients. I was, you know, if, if a, an accountant referred me a matter, I'd go and see the accountant and get to know them. You know, a lot of it was really in person. And what I found is we, we got to the kind of the limit of where that could take us because, you know, you can only see so many people. Yeah. So that's what led me to sort of think, well, how do we, how do we move beyond that? Um, how do we get, get some leverage, if you like, out of out of, uh, yeah. uh, of the shaking of the hands and, and all of that. And I think most professional services, almost, almost every professional service provider that yeah. I talk to, when I say, where do your new clients come? They say word of mouth referrals, you know. Yeah, and, uh, yeah absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And, and that, I mean, you know, you don't build, don't build a big brand just off people that you know from around, around the neighbourhood. You know what I mean? No, that that's right. And it comes back down to that trust. People will refer you if they trust you. So yeah. um, as you say, the, the end user or the the client or the customer needs to yeah. trust, of course, yeah. Yeah. but the referrer probably needs to trust even more right? Um, because it's their reputation on the line. So that makes it even more critical. So th this will be a recurring theme, but uh, you're right. I mean, and, and I'm not here to say that, you know, pressing the flesh isn't any good. I think it's the number one, but you can hit a limit. Um, yeah. and, it, and, it, and it is hard to, sorry, it is hard to scale. Uh, yeah. That's, that's for sure. So, was there an aha moment then when you said, hey, we've got to, 
we've got to do more. I've got to put myself out more in the marketplace. Did you just say, I've, I've shaken too many hands here? Uh, yeah, so that's a good question. So I think it was probably two or three years ago that we we decided that we wanted to try that. And we yep. did and we did it in a, a not a very strategic way and not a very, we didn't really have any insight into what that meant. And so we just did some videos and whacked them up, you know, um, and that didn't, you know, directly, no one rang it, no one watched our videos and therefore rang us and gave us a job. So we thought that didn't work. So we sort of, and I think a lot of professionals would be in that, in that um, a category. And a lot of professionals I've spoken to say, oh, we don't bother with all that online stuff because it doesn't work. We don't do videos because they don't work. And when they don't work, they mean that they, they, did, they put up a video one time and nobody rang them and gave them a job. And the reality is it just doesn't work like that. No. And even going and seeing people, if you go and shake someone's hand, they don't just ring you up the next day and give you a job. That might happen. But over time, you know, you see them again at something and then, you, you know, then you do some work for one of their clients and the client feeds back and you did a good job. It's all this, you know, it's, yeah. it's all that sort of stuff. So I suppose we tried it two years ago or three years ago, whatever it was, didn't really work, gave up on it, if you like. And then, yeah. um, and then we sort of got to the point where that, that, that there was nothing else we could do. I couldn't shake any more hands than I was already shaking. And so uh, it, it, was, it was that or sort of nothing. And so then we, we, we were a bit more clever about it and a bit more strategic about it. We hired you, which was a very clever move. And we, uh, and we got some, some, some better, um, uh, uh, better quality advice and really put together a more strategic plan, um, yep. which, which you know, makes a lot more sense and has a lot more impact. Yep. Uh, gives you sort of more purpose and direction as well. And purpose, um, yeah, that's right. You know, and, and you know why you're doing what you're doing. <laughs> there right. is a reason why. Yeah, yeah, right. So you've mentioned you practice law. This is a very conservative industry, as you sure. as you well know. Do you reckon is that a um, is that a hindrance? Did you, that hold you back? Because I'm in this industry, this profession that you know probably is a bit more tentative across many different areas, yeah. <laughs> particularly about putting views out and, and that side of things? Or did you see that as an opportunity or it didn't really yeah. matter? Uh, it was a bit of both. I think that a bit of both. I, I felt on one hand, lawyers weren't doing it. So if I did it, that would give me an edge. I'd be, you know, in the top 5% or whatever. There's not many lawyers doing YouTube videos or lawyers doing, um, uh, doing their own kind of, their own um, uh, con their own kind of strategic content that just doesn't really happen that often. And there's not many lawyers in the media. So I thought that's an advantage. Although as a lawyer, I think I was reluctant to do it because we tend to be yeah. worried about what we say. Did we say exactly the right thing? Was our advice yeah. exactly right? And the reality is that particularly in the media, when you do like a media interview, they ask yeah. you a sort of a general question. It's very difficult to answer it um, accurately and in two minutes and, you know, it, it, without putting a whole bunch of caveats on it and being really boring. So <laughs> it's, it, it's a new skill for, uh, for me to, to yeah. actually be, you know, be, um, be giving helpful advice in a general sense. The, the reality is actually that's what I do with clients. When, I, when a client asks me a question, I answer it in a way that's hopefully not boring and that summarises a complex yeah. thing. Um, so I just really tapped into the skill I already had, which was, was talking to clients in a matter-of-fact way and yep. so um, was able to kind of find a voice doing that which i already had through the client so so it, it actually worked well and i think now as a lawyer part of my job is to you know simplify the complex right so i should be able to communicate yeah to be able to communicate, yeah. Mm, to be able absolutely. To communicate. Yeah. the uh yeah there's there's definitely that probably a little less so now but there's i still see it all the time there's a reticence of yeah. people particularly in um particularly they've come out of corporate, but in, in certain professions of, oh, I can't put myself out there because of these reasons. And that's where the opportunity really lies. And uh, right. we know that, you know, things have become a lot more informal. And in fact, people demand, um, you know, content stories, articles, interviews, whatever, where they are a little bit more informal and real and authentic, but also, you know, giving good information because the bar has been lifted so high in terms of the people who have been out there in, in every industry uh, creating content and uh, being useful and helpful and being a contributor rather than yeah. a, a blocker. Yeah. Um, so let's, that's a good segue into the things you've done. So sure. because you've done a lot and you've pieced them together and a lot of people think, you know, um, you know, you just need, you know, a million people on YouTube and you'll be right. And that's that's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about a strategic uh, approach to building your uh, professional presence and profile and reputation in the marketplace and being recognised not just brand-wise brand, brand -wise, but for who you are, what you do, what you stand for and your, what your areas of expertise are. So uh, let, let's walk through it. Um, 
so you were, as you said, you, you were doing little bits and pieces on LinkedIn, but now you're a lot more active on LinkedIn. So let's tick them off first, then we can deep dive. We've got uh, LinkedIn, you're doing videos, they go onto YouTube, you've got a podcast, and you're doing a stack of media now as well. So right. let's keep the, there's the sort of the social and the content side of things, and then there's the media publicity side of things. So let's, um, because you built up to the media side. So let's look at the at the content side of things first, and let's yeah. uh, zero in on LinkedIn. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, I'm doing, we do very regular stuff on LinkedIn and we actually do all different stuff on, it's not a matter of just, we just um, do a ton of videos and put out a video every week, right? Which is what I thought prior to really talking to you and learning a bit about um, all of this stuff. I thought, oh, what you do is you just do a video a week and you chuck that out on LinkedIn and that's your promotion, you know, big tick. And that's why it didn't work previously because that's, it's just not, that's not what it's about. The first thing you've got to do is work out, well, who are you? What do you, you know, who are you talking to? Who are your ideal client? Where are they? What, you know, all that sort of stuff. What are you actually trying to say and who are you trying to say it to? And who are you gen, gen, um, um, genuinely, both in terms of as a, you know, as a, a, as a lawyer and as a, you know, as a business and as an individual, right? So you yeah. work out what you want to say and then, you know, where you're going to say it. Um, LinkedIn, um, we do, you know, we do some behind the scenes stuff. So we show, you know, if we're going to do a seminar, we show, what you know maybe us preparing for the seminar and funnily enough often the preparation for the seminar stuff is more interesting and and uh, popular than the actual seminar itself <laughs> um we do you know if we go to events we we, we promote that or, or you know um uh take a photo of it or whatever but probably the main thing we do is is i comment on what's going on in the media that's of interest to people yeah. so you know whatever's happened that week if there's something that comes up that's relevant to business owners to dispute resolution to, um, you know, um, to business law, then I, I might just, just make a comment on it, you know, but it's an informed comment, a helpful comment, a comment that, you know, hopefully is insightful. If I've got nothing insightful to say about it, I don't. I, I want to, you know, be a, really offer my own perspective. Um, and then I also do quite regular videos and, and they're the kind of no bull videos, which I put up, which are just things, if, if I, it's regular issues that come up for my clients and my connections that I see, like say on, on poaching, for instance, which we, we mentioned, poaching such a, a common issue at the moment, I might do a video on, well, what is poaching and, you know, how do you prevent it? Prevent it? Yeah. You know, it's sort of educational co content, not heavy on the legals. It's really practical um, tips on how to avoid poaching, what it means and, and what you can and can't do yeah. um, so that my, you know, clients and connections kind of build up a relationship of trust with me that I'm there, you know, I've got their back. I'm helping them with, you know, I'm just helpful. Helpful is the right word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's, that's always a really good place to start is we call that utility content, which is yeah. useful, helpful. Um, you understand your audience, what are their questions, needs, yeah. challenges that they're probably facing and, and, and let's give them some, uh, bite size, uh, helpful tips, guides, advice, insights around that topic. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you just mentioned you called it no bull. Uh, it's called no, no bull yeah. legal tip. Yeah. Which uh, is true to your brand, and right. you know you are, your your uh, company name is Taurus Legal Management, which yeah. is represented by a bull. Right. So, <laughs> so no, that doesn't make a lot of sense, but it, yeah, there's the bull theme. <laughs> there is. We'll continue the bull theme. Yeah. But you know, that's I always find that that's a really good place to start because that's you know that stuff so well, and yeah. and and I mean. You're good talent because you're used to getting up and presenting and that side yeah. of things anyway. Not that you're a barrister, but you know yeah. you you do have to present and and yeah. uh, but you know understanding presenting to a a client and presenting to, to on a camera, um, you know that you're doing you're doing it with your you know your mobile phone and setting it up and got a couple of lights and that yeah. side of things. But it takes a little bit of getting used to, but it's not sure. too bad. Sure. Yeah. So I've got to say, I mean, the best tip I think you ever gave me is you just got to ship it. You just got to do it. You do yeah. a video. And my first video, I was standing next to my banner with a white black ground and I was like, well, hello and welcome to Taurus Legal. You know, I like I was, thought I was a newsreader or something. I was trying to do, <laughs> trying to perform, you know, which was yeah. bad, bad, bad. And I watched it back and thought, because this is terrible. Where did all my personality go? Like, I'm, I'm you know, I'm a likable guy. I got I, you know, <laughs> people and it all just went out the window when I did my first video. And then I watched it back and said, it's terrible. So then, you know, you, then you get, you, you do a few more and you get more relaxed and you find your kind of, your voice and, and the no bull, obviously it's good with the brand, but it's also good that I'm a direct person who, who tell you what you need to do and what you don't need to do in a practical way. It's all no bull advice. That's my personality. 
And yes. so that, that all sort of works well. You know, it's obviously called the no bull, which is a bit of a hook. But the reality is I'm talking straight down the camera, giving advice about practical stuff that you, 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 you yeah. do. I do it at home. I do it, you know, get it, I record it, record three or four in one, you know, morning and then they're, they're all out the next, you know, week or two. It all just happens quickly and fairly seamlessly. All of that took a bit of time to get used to cool. and get organised, but it's really about practice. You know, like anything, you, you know, the first few you do are a bit, rubbish and then as time goes on you get better and you get you know you get and you get more, just much more comfortable with it i mean people yeah. people don't sit there and criticize it people watch it you know it's the same as a, 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 a um, nobody watches it three or four times like i do and criticizes the exact words i use or whatever they just watch it once and they get an impression of my you know my knowledge my personality and they think is this a guy i could work with and i could trust and if they say no and then they don't ring us. Well, that's a win. I don't want people ringing us who are not interested in working with me, who don't like me, or don't like my style. That's fine. Yep. Um, but if they do, they, you know, then that, that's one more interaction they've had with me, albeit by video. Um, and at the moment, I mean, if I put a video up, we might get, you know, 500 people looking at it. So that's, that's 500 people who've, you know, watched me for 30 seconds, a minute, two minutes um, that they weren't before. And, you know, and if I look at the who's looking at it, you know, a lot of them are managing directors of companies. So that's yeah. got to be a win. That's right. That's right. And and that's that's when you're being strategic about it is that, I mean, you're not after massive numbers because, no. you know, your audience is this. And it's, it, look, it's a little bit of a dry subject, but, I mean, it's a very important subject. But, um, you know, you're always trying to make the hook as strong as possible to, you know, what, what is, what's, on, what's on the tin is what's in the tin. Um, <laughs> right. You know, one, one hook per per video, get them out there and, and, and add value. So if someone walks away and has, you know, makes them think about this topic that could be an issue to them, then that's, that's a win. But as you can say in the, uh, LinkedIn, um, uh, analytics, you can see who are the most, who's mostly watching or interacting with your content. And, um, you know, if they're, if they're man if you're after managing directors and CEOs and founders and managing partners and accountants, Yep. Uh, if they start popping up, well, then you're on the right. At least the content is hitting the mark. Then the question is, you know, over a period of time, can you can you um, build those views? Uh, and that's that's the critical thing there. But it's consistency, isn't it? It's it's sure. it's not the doing it once, as you said. A lot of lawyers will do. They'll put one or professional services firm. They'll put something up and oh, that didn't work, and they walk away. It's that consistency of effort. Um, a mutual friend of ours, uh, Pat Mannix uh, from Paris Financial. Um, he actually introduced us and uh, Pat's been on the show before and I've worked with Pat and, you know, he went through the same journey and, and he, you know, he had, he's probably done it by the time I had interviewed him for the podcast, he'd done 150 um, videos over right. a period of time. And, you know, it's, 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 it's in aggregate, it, it kind of really builds. So that's, that's the important one there. But so the, the key is now is that that's the really good starting point because it's what you know, um, your, your first ones are going to be rubbish. No, not necessarily yep. rubbish, but not not up to uh, Steven Spielberg's st standards. Yep. <laughs> um, but don't let perfection get in the way of getting it done. You know, Absolutely. you've got to get it out there. You've, um, you know, sure, you can take a few takes, yeah. but, you know, usually your, your first one's probably the best one. <laughs> and then you yeah. go back and try and finesse yeah. it. But, and, and so the equipment you use, you just use a phone. Yeah. Um, you've got, what, one light and uh, a small mic. Yeah, that's right. So a phone, the b b biggest advice I'd give is, is get a microphone. The, the sound on a phone is not great if you're using the phone's yeah. internal. The, the camera on it's great. Um, yeah. the, so I got a little lapel mic, which was not expensive with a little wire, maybe get an extension cord because you, sometimes you're a bit further away. Um, but I, I just put the um, phone on a little, I've got a little stand with a, a light on it. So stand, yeah. light, mic, that's it. And you can take that, put that anywhere, just put it somewhere where the light's good. And, uh, and you can make a video about anything you like. And, and, and my big bit of advice is you just, you, you, you talk to the camera like you would talk to a client and everyone's getting a taste of you, right? And as I say, they'll either like it and, and then in which case they're the sort of client you want or they won't like it, in which case they're the sort of client you don't want. So as long as you're coming across as the real you in the real advice real. that you're giving, then you, you can't go wrong. And that then, you know, you can put that to 500 people or whatever it is, rather than, you know, ring 500 people and chat to them yourself. And that's, yeah. that's just a, a huge, um, there's just a huge leverage in that. And that's, and that is also the, the bonus of uh, video is we can see the whites of your eyes and, you know, it's, it just, uh, you know, it's not right for everyone. And if you hate, really hate doing video, don't do it. Um, but, you know, if, if, if you push yourself a little bit and you get into the groove on and it's great. And as you said, batch producing is the best way to get it done. 
um, and, and, and planning it out. You know, yeah. we had a list of, I don't know, 30 topics, didn't we, at one point? We did, and I've done them all. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but yeah, was... all of them, yeah. yeah. Um, but that, yeah, that... that was the, it was the strategy, really, that I agreed with you that made all the difference, that we go, well, hang on, you know, who are we trying to appeal to? And for us, there's, there's two main clients. There's well, two main audiences, I should say, which is, yeah. is there's the kind of the clients who are often kind of blue-collar managing directors or whatever who, you know, they're one type of person. And then the other is the kind of professional services, the accountants who either might refer them or who might have issues themselves. And so they're, they're, they're two different sort of different audiences who are probably um, different things are going to appeal to them and going to have slightly different issues. Um, yep. So we worked that out and then said, okay, well, that's, that's, they're the people I'm trying to, to speak to. And they were already our clients. So we know what worries them and what excites that's them right. and all that. And so that's it was right. relatively easy. And, and video worked for me because I'm sort of comfortable with video. You know, if you're into writing or, you, you know, that's fine. But that's part of, part of the kind of content strategy is really just working out who you are and what you're comfortable with and, you know, what, yeah. what, uh, what's going to work for you practically. Uh, yeah, of course. Yeah. And and just uh, to tie a bow around LinkedIn, there's also the uh, the other part of it which people don't talk. They get you know we get besotted by the content and very good reason why. Um, but it's it's commenting on other people's things and actually being a participant um, and and actively t you know growing that network. Yeah, that's right. So so I'm you know I often now comment on other people and there's some people who I know. In fact, I met a fellow the other day who I hadn't ever met, but we were sort of LinkedIn friends, and yep. uh, and we commented on each other's stuff quite a lot. And and I thought I'd recognise you. Have I seen you on the telly or something? And it's I'd seen him on LinkedIn, and we you know we we talk. And he's yeah. a, he's a professor, you know, and he talks about work, workplace issues, and uh, and so you know being involved in LinkedIn, you know, and it might it might be literally five minutes a day. It doesn't have to be a long right. long time, but you right. need to get get involved. And then you know if someone comments or, you're in, you know, you send them a meeting request if that's appropriate. You know, you, you have yeah. a bit of back and forth. Yeah. Some people now, when I'm looking at potentially a new client, I'll often, you know, um, get involved with them in some way on LinkedIn, get a bit of feedback, then maybe drop them an email, then maybe call them, then maybe go and see them, then, you know, send them a video that I've done. You know, the, the content, if you like, just becomes part of that overall, you know, the, the pressing the flesh strategy. It becomes part of it rather than kind of a separate thing. As an aside, you've also told me in the uh, in the past that um, there's been queries from clients and stuff on particular issues, and you've just sent them through to a video that, that explains it all. <laughs> sorry, I just cut out there for a minute. Oh, okay, sorry. I was just going to say um, you've there's a uh, you told me once that uh, you've had clients and other people that have. Uh, you know, called you up about something and you said, I've done a video on this and you just send them a link to the video. Uh, yeah, absolutely. So it becomes kind of part of your uh, the way you deal with clients. So I've got a new inquiry, you know, and they say, oh, I'm, I'm worried about poaching or whatever. And we go, well, here's a video. Here's the podcast, you know. So if they're then, they're going to go to five lawyers and they're going, which one am I going to choose? You know, there's one who sent them a video and a podcast on that very issue. You know, that's got to put us in front. You know, they may or may not go ahead or whatever. If nothing else, you might have just helped them. Um, and then, you know, that you've, 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 it's been no, no skin off our nose because we don't have to go off and write a big long email about it. We just send them the podcast. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, that happens in, in lots of ways. We, we might, I might go and see a client, you know, a new potential client, nothing comes of it, but then something else pops up and I think, oh, they'd be interested in that. So I send it to them, you know, because I've yeah. got, got it there. You know, we yeah. even, we've got a, you know, a dispute resolution guide, which, which, you know, sets out some, some really helpful tips. And if someone's having a dispute, we send that to them as the first step. So it just creates this kind of content um, ecosystem, you know, that you can draw yeah. on. You know, I mean, we would have done that already, but, but, but this is a much more comprehensive. And now we've got videos and podcasts and yeah. um, articles and, and uh, a body of work. Yeah, body, yeah, that's right, that you can send to people and share with people. And, and it just helps you be more useful. Yep. Mm. Now you've mentioned podcasts, so yep. we've ticked off LinkedIn, all of that yep. stuff, and we got LinkedIn, yep. um, and and those videos end up on YouTube as well. So we'll tick that box. Uh, but really, we've uh, you've also got a podcast. Um, why don't you tell us about that and what do you cover? What's it called? Sure. So the podcast is called A Lawyer and a Financial Advisor Walk Into a Bar. Um, it's called that because it's funny, and, and it's also called that because. Um, because we're trying to make it like a bar room discussion. So, you know, our clients don't want a dry lecture from a lawyer and a financial advisor. I mean, that's, that's a pretty boring combination. So the last thing they want is a lecture on, you know, the changes to the Corporations Act over the last year or something. But they might <laughs> want to know how they stop, you know, their, client, their, their, their team running off with their clients or they might want to know, 
um, you know, should they invest in shares or should they invest in property? You know, these kind of questions that people have that they, and, they, they, and they want to kind of get advice from that in a casual way, like you might in a barroom conversation. So that was yeah. the kind of thinking. And then, um, and that comes back to the content strategy, right? Yeah. And then the fellow who I do it with, um, uh, Dave, uh, is, is easy to get on with. I have a good rapport with, and it, because there's the two of us, it just becomes this kind of chat, um, which is much better than just me giving a, a, a legal lecture. And he can ask me questions about law that he doesn't really understand, yes. and, and I can ask him questions about finance. And so, you know, that, that and obviously everyone, although it might be a boring topic, all business owners are worried about the legal issues in their business, and they're worried about you know managing their finances to, to have the best yes. life they can, right? So they're you know yes. it's a topic that's actually of interest to people. So yes. we just have a chat. We've just started having guests on, so we've had our first guest who was an accountant on, um, yes. but uh, uh, for a long time we were just the two of us having a chat, and, and it. it um, the rapport really makes it hopefully a reasonably entertaining show. It's quite a few yeah. regular listeners come back to us and say, you know, that was a great episode. I really enjoyed that. You know, sometimes people ring us up and they say, oh, you know, I'm a new inquiry about this thing. I've listened to your podcast and, you know, blah, blah, blah. So that, you know, they already know a little bit about us before they even contact us, which is, which is really good. Yeah. Um, the, uh, so the person in question, your partner in crime on this one in, in the bar is yeah. uh, Dave Murdoch, from, uh, AKA the wealth activist. Yeah. Um, and, and what, what I like about it, there's a couple of things. One is that you're, you're both sort of service. You're both in traveling in parallel universes, right. uh, as it were. Um, and, 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 you know, you're right. There's the audiences, uh, you know, Dave works with. Uh, people, high net worth individuals, people who own businesses like the people that you deal with. So there's a crossover of, of audience there. Um, he promotes it to his people. You promote it to yours. There's cross promotion of audiences, which I really like the synergies of that. But it's really, you know, you're right. People who are running businesses and entrepreneurs and high net worth individuals, or you might be, a, you know, a partner in a, in a, in a, a professional services firm or something. They have legal issues. They have financial issues. The, right. the, the two are intertwined, and often yeah. there's legal issues coming out of the finance ones. Yeah. Um, but what I like about the podcast is it gets down and into the day to day of what people face. Yeah. So it's not a legal. It's it's actually a business and lifestyle, <laughs> bit not lifestyle, but a business and life podcast. Yeah. Um, with a bit of a skew on, you know, you can go legal, you can go finance, but you are both own your own businesses. Right. Um, you're both in the same game. You're, you're running that, you know, you're parallel in that regard. Yeah. And and you're talking about the business lessons as well. So I think it's a real, and it's entertaining, as you say, because it is that yeah. barroom banter and yeah. you understand your audience. Yeah. And and I think your audience is probably going to be people who are very similar to uh, to yourselves and, you know, they're running businesses and they're interested in, 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 in you know, making sure that that business does well and that they've got something down the track right. that yeah, they can yeah. pass on as well, yeah, um, which yeah. is a lot of where Dave fits in in terms of the uh, wealth transfer. So I think it's, you know, and for and um, for anyone who's, you know, interested in those topics generally, I think it's a it's a really easy listen. They're about 20-minute episodes, aren't they, yeah. I think? And, yeah. Um, and it's good to see bringing in other guests as well. I think that that's the next – again, you start – you know, with yourselves, and then as you get confidence in the right. in um, the technology and what you're doing, then you bring the next the next um, layer in, which is interviewing of guests to mix it up a bit. Yeah. So that that comes out what it's fortnightly, isn't it? So you yes. always yeah, and again you've batch produced a lot of those. Yes, um, get them in the bank, and um, there is a uh, uh, you know you've got now got help people helping you right. to. Um, production on that you've got think people outsourcing all of that sort of stuff to um where do i need the help and how do, how can i get how can i ship it how can i get this stuff out there yeah. so the time you actually spend is probably nowhere near as much as what people think it is right yeah i think people you're a bit intimidated and i certainly was it's particularly around the technology you know i was sort of oh i've got to you know have this Fancy? Do I have to have a podcast studio? What is it all? And no, you just sit at your computer with the the the, um, the camera on your computer if you want the camera and a microphone that you buy for for ninety bucks and uh, yeah. and away you go. You you know you download a link and off you go. So it's not that complicated. Um, uh, setting it up, obviously, you need to have you know you've got to be sure about what you want to talk about and have some you know you don't want to run out of episodes after five episodes. So it takes a little bit of setting up, but then as you get into the swing of it, now I mean Dave and I meet. Um, once every two weeks, 
and we record two episodes and we drop, we drop, we, 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 I always like the term drop. It's very, I feel very trendy when I drop an episode, but uh, <laughs> drop when we release an episode every two weeks, so we're always building up more episodes than we're, than we're putting out, which is good. So we've got some in the bank and it yeah. takes us, you know, there are 20 minute episodes. It might take us half an hour to record a 20 minute episode. So you really, you know, that's a, that's an hour, an hour's work every two weeks um, to give us this whole podcast. And then we do, we've now learned to outsource there's a little bit of editing so that they create some snippets which we which are real short videos on the podcast which help us we pop them on LinkedIn to help us promote but they're all things that evolve I know when I when I if I was listening to myself you know and I was me a, a year or two ago and I heard all of this I think oh I can't do all that that's all very hard there's a whole you know I've got a business to run I, I can't you know there's just too much and I think at, so, at some stage early on probably with you Trev I thought oh this is all too much for me but they're all things that happen one step at a time you know you you record a pod, you know, a couple of podcasts, and they're not bad. And then you pop them out, and then you know, you think, hang on, I'd quite like to promote these. And I, there was a couple of good quotes in there, you know. And so then you go, oh, how do we? I do a snippet, and you get, you know, maybe someone external. We've got an external person who does it. Um, doesn't yeah. cost a lot, and it's very efficient. That just goes to them, and then they give us a couple of snippets, which then my team pop up on LinkedIn. So you sort of, you know, you progress, and, and maybe, you know, maybe a podcast not for you, not for you right now. Just do a couple of videos for a while, and then maybe you decide, okay, I want to try the podcast. You know. It all happens step by step. It's not sort of everything or nothing. And, and you know, to the extent you, if you don't have time, you, you, you do less. And, and what I certainly found is if you can get the right technical people to help you, and that's not all that complicated, then that makes a huge difference. And you, you, then you, you just do the interesting bit, which I quite enjoy. I enjoy the chats with Dave and I learn yeah. things from him and he learns things from me. Um, and it's interesting, just on your earlier point um, about how it's become a bit of not quite a lifestyle thing, but it certainly evolved. When we started, we thought we were going to talk about, you know, do I invest in shares or, um, you know, what are the five tips to stop um, uh, to, to, you know, get a good lease or, you know, whatever, legal financial topics. But it did evolve and we sort of found that we were giving advice about our own experience as business people. You know, would we start a business again if we had the chance? What would we teach our earlier selves? These quite bigger questions, which I think are, were more interesting. And, you know, you know, is how, how do you find staff and what are the right staff? I mean, they're not technical legal questions. They're actually just the sorts of things that business owners worry about. And we actually, we you know, from our own experience, we've got some sort of life advice about, you know, when, you know, rather than saying, okay, succession planning, you need a will. We say, well, hang on, succession planning, you might want to step back from your business. Do you want to spend more time with your wife? Or don't you? Do you want to go and play golf? Can you play golf every day? You know, if, if you retire tomorrow, what would you do? You know, you need to fill that space. There's these kind of deeper questions which were much more interesting and, and really evolved organically. That wasn't our plan. And I think it, it's made the podcast more interesting and uh, and, and, and people have got more out of it because of, of that. Yeah, I, I agree. And, and you know, as we said earlier, the, even with your videos, a lot of that earlier stuff is that utility, yeah. you know it. You know, like the back of your hand, it's yeah. pres- it's a bit pr- transactional or prescriptive. Sure, yeah. but that's a really that, you know, whenever it went wrong, being useful and helpful. But you can only go so far on that expertise, and I think you've got to demonstrate your bona fides in that. Yeah. But where I'm a great believer in building your personal brand and even the thought leadership positioning in the marketplace is when you start making people think about different yeah. topics and issues. And I, I call that leadership content for want of a better word. But it's it's. People don't know what they don't know, and they, they're probably things they've never thought about. And and if they're couched in stories and examples and anecdotes, and and you're exploring those ideas in public, you might not be fully formed in a lot of them. Yeah. But you're, you're putting them out there like you are, in, and asking those questions. That's what that's what builds audience and and rapport and um, and and sure, you know your stuff. <laughs> that's yeah. obvious, but it's this this dimension this of humanity over and above sure. it, which well, I think. Well, that's what is, I mean. Ultimately, they can hire any. Most lawyers are going to know how to file a statement of claim in the Supreme Court, right? And if I, you know, I give you some tips on that, sure. Most lawyers know how to do that. But why do they hire me rather than someone else? And it's, you know, obviously my personality, which they can assess in this in this content and, and obviously assess by talking to me. But it's also what's my take on these things, you know? And I, I notice in, in as, as litigation strategy, as a, an example, I notice that people go through this kind of emotional roller coaster where they, you know, they begin really angry at the other side and they really want to stick it to them and they don't care about how much it's going to cost and whatever. And then they, you know, as time goes on and they talk to their wife or their husband or their or whatever, or their significant others, and they get over it a bit, then their, their emotions go down. You know, there's this kind of emotional arc, which I can share with people and people can learn and, you know, end up coming to get, um, putting together a much better litigation strategy that's going to help them in their life, not just, yeah. you know, 
tick the right court boxes or whatever, but you can give much more um, helpful, um, insightful advice to people by, by finding that kind of voice, you know. I agree. That's that's a perfect example of, you know, you might start with how to, how much is it going to cost yeah, to get right. a lawyer yeah. to the emotional arc of being in litigation yeah. and so people can identify with that. So yeah. um, it's, a, it's a classic example right there of, you know, not right or wrong either way, but where you need to go if you really want to push the boundaries. Um, let's just, uh, conscious of time, so switch gears into the media, what well, I'd call sure. media relations, people call media publicity, basically getting on radio, TV, newspapers, all that sort of stuff. Yep. Um, it's something you've taken on. You went in early on that. A lot of people, a lot of people want to start there. They want to start that. Right. And, but without doing the sort of the content these days, I think the content builds your bona fides, you build your personal brand. Then you, you look at media relations straight away. Um, going back in the old days, everyone went straight to media relations, but I think it's too, uh, competitive out there now to crack that market. Um, it's best to build your brand and your reputation first and then really be strategic and smart and proactive with how you do it. So walk us through what you've been doing in a media relations sense or a media publicity sense. Sure. You've, you've generated a fair bit of editorial exposure this year. Yeah. Um, give us a, a bit of a sketch on on what you've been on and sure. sort of how many interviews and stuff, and then we can quickly unpack that. Yeah, so I'd say LinkedIn was, was a, a, the way we kind of almost – experimented with that you put up things on linkedin that you know and you see what people are interested in if and, and we found if there's things that are sort of in the news you know there's something in the news that week a, a business collapse or a high profile dispute or, or or something that you know we could have a, a comment on and be helpful about then so linkedin is kind of the testing ground and those sort of things that i would post on linkedin that were popular i then started submitting to the media as, as story ideas and so yeah. the really the challenge is trying to link in what what the media is interested in, which is, you know, the media's main, it was mainstream media. So they're not going to be interested in the latest changes to the Corporations Act. They're going to be interested in the Ben Robert Smith defamation case, right? Which is a big commercial dispute, which is right up my alley. I could have handled that case. That's, you know, a big Supreme Court um, um, commercial dispute, which I could do. So, and I can comment on it. So, so we started submitting media stories. So there's a bit of work in that. You've got to obviously know what's going on in the media and you've got to, you know, have your own take on it. So, building that content and knowing what your own take is that's a little bit unique is very helpful. Um, and mm -hmm. so you submit stories. And then, of course, you, you know, you get a, a nibble. So we get we got did some radio, some interstate radio, which, you know, was um, was a, the first uh, I got invited to to um, be interviewed on some of these topics. And then, you know, you do some more mainstream radio. And then, you know, that sort of I ended up doing a lot of radio. I've got a regular radio um, uh, or well, it's not it's not regular, but I, I'm asked all the time on Two Double C, which is the Canberra radio station, um, uh, and I've been on it maybe ten or fifteen times. And then you know I've done some for Triple M, and I've done I've been on the radio um, with Three AW, and you know I'd quite like to go um, to do some some more radio, especially that kind of mainstream breakfast radio. That, that I mean in in in, um, in Melbourne, um, you know you might have two million people listening to, to breakfast radio if you can yeah. get on that. Uh, then you're getting a huge audience and yep. uh, and then you pop that on your website you know you pop that on you you send that to people you know that becomes part of the content again if someone brings up a question about defamation you say well here's the interview i did on defamation which is quite yeah. cool yeah you send it out as part of your newsletter so i did a lot of radio and then just recently i've i've been on sky news um interviewed about the andrew thorburn um uh and ceo issue. So they asked me about, you know, wh whether he'd have a legal claim or wouldn't. And it really came as a result of me putting in a submission to the media saying, uh, I think Andrew Thorburn could actually sue for discrimination, which was funny because everyone was sort of upset about that, that he might be discriminating. And so there was a sort of an irony in that. And um, and uh, and that the church might be discrimination, which it certainly probably was. But yeah. I had, you know, my own kind of uh, comment on that, which the, the, the Sky News picked up. So I went into the studio in, in, you know, and was interviewed on Sky News live, which was very exciting and which, you know, it looks pretty good for the firm to be um, to be the go-to person for, you know, a really um, well-known media channel. Yeah. And you, uh, was there a client, clients rang you afterwards or something that they actually seen? See, as I was walking out of the studio that evening, I, I got a, a text from a, a very good long-term client of um, the firms who said, oh, I just saw you on the media, you know, and I was pretty happy. He said he was pretty happy to see his lawyer on television being, you know, he, he felt felt that that, yeah, nice. that that was pretty good. And uh, and then, in fact, and he's in partnership with 
um, another fellow who has never used us and who's, you know, a very, very significant business person and he has his own lawyer and you sort of think, well, that's got to, you know, and then he brought it up at the board meeting. He said he spoke to, you know, they were talking about the footy and then they talked about how I was on the television talking about this, this issue. And so that's got to give us some credibility with this other person yeah. who's, you know, potentially a very good client for us, helps, you know, mm. dislodge the current law lawyers and maybe um, give us a go because it just gives us some credibility. And as I said before, it's not, I don't think they're going to go, oh, I saw you on TV. I've got this big job for you. Here you go. No, but you know, it's all just part well. of the story of, of, of you know, that, that over time that you build credibility and trust with these people. Yeah, it's it's an aggregate and your narrative needs to be consistent. So people, ah, that, I know that person, That's they, they're the ones for me and you they almost self, uh, you almost self-selected for them. Yeah. Um, and just for, for overseas listeners, we did get a bit uh, uh, very Melbourne, Australia in, in all of that. Um, but really what, um, what Alex is talking about is that, that these are mainstream commercial TV uh, or radio um, stations and shows. Um, and that's they, they, that can be a hard nut to crack. Doesn't matter which, whether you're in England or um, Europe or or America. Um, the same, it's the same thinking applies. We're no different here with our media in terms of trying to get onto um, me, onto the media, uh, onto radio, onto broadcast TV, etc. And then and then making the move to to TV um, is even a, a bigger thing. You know, we haven't got a stack of TV channels here in in Australia, and that Andrew Thorburn issue is, was a high profile. Uh, domestic uh, Melbourne, pretty much a Melbourne only story uh, involving the biggest sporting code in the country, and um, and that's that made it controversial and talked about, and that's why you know Alex put his hand up and said I can talk about this because it was in his wheelhouse, and and we might just cover off here that um, you don't go direct, I don't do it for you. That's what I used to do for 20, 25 years. I used to do that. I don't, I don't ring the media anymore. Um, there's people that that's all they do. And that's what you want them to specialize and focus on. There's too many other things to do, but it never leaves you. What is a good story and what's the pitch going to look like? But, um, you use a, a, a service here in Australia and there's probably very similar ones overseas. Uh, it's called Media Stable run by Nick Hayes. Nick, uh, um, long-time listener of the podcast. He's been on the show a couple of times. And basically he represents, I guess you'd say, uh, or has, has his members of Me Me Media Stable um, experts, credible, genuine experts, and they put out a, 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 a like they're called a media board, don't they, yeah. um, that, that goes out to about six or 700 uh, media outlets every day and you uh, you jump on top of that. Oh, and uh, you, you, add, you add your pitch to it and because he's built this credibility – um, with with TV and radio and newspapers over a good many years, they take notice of when that comes in and they have a look at it, and there's a bit of that. Plus, they can do a bit of pitching as well on your behalf. So, you've, you've, whether you do it yourself, whether you've got a PR person or a publicist doing it, or whether you use a service like uh, Media Stable, um, I'm, I'm not really massively big on spending huge amounts of money putting out a, a press release. Um, unless it's a really big story and you've really got a good chance, uh, but that that can uh, be a little bit hit and miss. Although um, in more recent times we spoke to Mickey Kennedy, who runs e-releases in the United States, which is a press release distribution. Uh, so it's worth listening to that. But there's some do's and don'ts around that. But the you know this method of at least getting in the front, you know, on the front foot. Being, being quick, it's about being quick, isn't it? It's about knowing that this issue is breaking, having a point of view, getting it out, um, in your case, via media stable, um, so it's still hot. Right. And they will then, the media, you know, they want good experts. And as you've shown with uh, the Canberra radio station, they come if you they come back to you again and again. Um, yeah. There's a rapport with, yeah. the, with the producer and the, uh, and the host, or particularly the host, and you, you give good quote. Right. And you're responsive and you turn up and you do it and you do it well and everyone's happy, win-win. Right. Um, lots of ticks there. Yeah, and, and I can say that the you know that I got on the radio partly because I had done some videos. And so the radio people were able to see that the videos were good and they could hear me and say, well, he, he sounds good, you know. And then, then you do the enough radio, you know, you get on the smaller stations if you like and then you get on the bigger stations because they can see that yep. you've got the you know the, the the CV is starting to look impressive and you can send them some samples and all that and then the same with the television I mean they wouldn't have just put me on a you know a major television network to um to be interviewed if they had no idea whether I could 
speak English or, you know, if I could answer the question or I'd, you know, go, go to, go to water when I was, when I was, you know, cross-examined by this fellow, which sort of happened, um, you need yeah. to, you know, you need to show that you know what you're doing and that's just building, you know, building from a small, you know, from your own videos or your own whatever online to, uh, to, yeah. to radio and then to television, if that's what you want. And, and also yeah. then I've got some, some, we've done some, um, uh, media in, in kind of more narrow business focused publications, which might just be an article or whatever, but it's an article going to, you know, owners of their own small businesses who are exactly our potential clients. And if you can get a regular column in that, then, you know, it's all just, yeah. it's all uh, uh, the right audience for us. You know? and, the, and, yeah, and those business um, online publications and magazines and stuff, I mean, the good part with those is that it can be a bit more of the evergreen one. I know you did one about how to pick if someone's lying, which is also part of your 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 strategy, and you know, being part, being a litigation specialist to know that sort of stuff, yeah. and that's a good evergreen thing that you can pitch. And it might take a couple of months. I think one a couple of them took a you know, a little bit of time to get up, but once they're up, they're up. Yeah. Whereas the media commentary thing on you know this is where you are in luck when there are issues all the time. You got to jump on it. Sure, you got to bone up on it and know a little bit about it. Um, hone your angle and your pitch, which you're getting very, very good at doing now, and and then get in, get on the ground floor, build rapport, and then success begets success yeah. um, in terms of editorial exposure, and that adds value. And then the loop starts, doesn't it, Alex? Because then, as you say, you should get the get the... Um, get the footage um, or the, you know, the audio interview and then promote that on YouTube via socials and yeah. then and put it on the blog and then around and around it goes. Right. So you really, um, everything, the aggregate, it just starts building. Yes, that's right. I mean, the television interview, obviously, we thought was a pretty good. And, you know, I looked very schmick on my, you know, in my suit and tie and, and, it, and it, uh, the interview was, I think, quite interesting and it had a little joke at the end, which was very lucky. And so we were able to, you know, we sent an email newsletter out to our clients and that was one of the things in the newsletter. There was a bunch of other stuff too. And, you know, we stuck, stuck it on the website and we popped it up on LinkedIn when it happened. And then later on, you know, in relation to something else that came out that this was a relevant comment, we popped that up again. So you get plenty of mileage out of it and then you get some experience and hopefully do the next one. Um, and the whole yeah. thing, yeah, just circles around. I think it's interesting, actually, how you can, if you have a comment about something, say the lie detecting is a good example. You know, I've done a video on that. I've written a long form article, which was published in um, in, a, in a small business type publication. You know, I've, I've done some posts on LinkedIn about it. You know, it's all the same content, all the same bit of information, the same knowledge, but it's just kind of repackaged in different ways for different audiences. And, it, and you know, it, it, it's a sort of a sexy topic. People like lie detecting. You know, you can lie detect your children or, your, you know, it doesn't have to be about business, but it obviously can be about business. And, uh, and yep. certainly some, some clients who've, who've rung in have said, you know, I want to hire you. I'm my current lawyer, I'm going to give the, the flick. I want to hire you because you know all about how to detect lies. And I think the other side are, are lying and, you know, and off you go. Mm. Fantastic. Alex, um, this has been a great conversation. I'm re really wrapped for you. Uh, it's just great to see you take it on, um, you know, understand the importance of strategy. And, you know, there was you had to grind out a bit of the right. um, the planning stuff to get it going. Um, but once you get that sort of clarity and then once you're on a, on a path, then and you, you know, you've got your direction, you know when to go off the path as well yeah. uh, because you're, at least you're on a path versus I know some people, they're just all over the shop and, and what we see from them just confuses the marketplace more than um, reinforces. So you're, you're in the right zone there. So thank you very much for your generosity today. Um, how can, if if there's someone out there who's got a business dispute and you're running a company and your, your uh, staff are about to walk out with multitudes of your clients, yes. where do they go? How do they get in contact with you, sir? So LinkedIn is great. So it's Alex Martin, you know, I'm a lawyer on LinkedIn, um, but also our website. So that's www.taurus, T-A-U-R-U-S, tauruslawyers.com.au. Um, and uh, all our contact details are on there. But if you Google Alex Martin Lawyer, you'll see about, 20 different things that I've done. And, and that, that's part of it, right? It's, it's all there. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's all there. Yeah. That's great. That's, that, that is good. That is good. Excellent bit of SEO juice there. <laughs> all righty. Uh, thanks very much. Um, love your work. Thanks, Trevor. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate it.